All right, four black screws here hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. We'll have them out. Four flathead screws or countersunk screws hold the retaining ring in place. Have those black screws out. All of this is just a bit sticky with old grease. And lift out the inner and outer helical together. And th this is moves comparatively freely, so it's not a bad example. Alright, four screws here hold the focus mount into the front standard. Two of them were loose. If those screws come loose then effectively your whole lens and shutter assembly can rattle backwards and forwards in the mount and um, which means that your focus can be a little bit less than precise. Okay so that's that's good and done. Get this film advance taken apart while we're here. So I'm going to remove this circlet and the spring I'll put over there for the stuff that doesn't get dealt to with this time. This is the lock lever and that's reluctant to come out of the hole, so it's probably got a spot of corrosion. It has. a little spot of corrosion right there. That was making it a bit sticky. Uh, typically they don't give much trouble. The most obvious fault with something like that when it gives trouble is that the film advance doesn't stop when it gets to the end of the film because the lever is stuck and so it doesn't fall down correctly. Right, this is the release lever. This is activated by the shutter release and the spring on this is a bit bent. It's going to need some retention. So this releases your film advance when you press the shutter release to allow you to move on to the next frame. The rewind button's got to come off, and I've got a pair of pliers to do that job. Alright, so we've got the washer, the return spring, and the rewind knob. And we'll go there separate ways. There's a single screw holds the sprocket and the sprocket shaft together. Usually that's easy to get it. Here, yeah. here's our sprocket shaft. Here's the sprocket. The sprocket usually doesn't need to be cleaned through the ultrasonic cleaner. And the top of the film advance, the bush, has fallen out since it's held by nothing now. That's just very dirty. This is the clutch. The clutch is three pieces. The clutch's job is to make sure there's some controlled slippage between the take-up spool and the sprocket. I'll unhook the spring from the base of that catch. That catch's job is to hold the rewind button to press after you press it in until such stage as you move the film advance again. I'll just recover its spring. Here's the lever. Three screws hold the bush on this film advance shaft to the camera. 
if they're loose they can cause you problems and cause you problems in a couple of ways they can stick up and jam the film advance so that it doesn't move smoothly and uh, the other thing they do is if that film advance shaft is able to move up and down loosely now what I'm expecting to find here is that the grease on this is really thick and gooey Where's that other screw gone? Here it is. Because I'm looking for the reason that the film advance was so stiff. And this, yeah, that's pretty nasty. That would be reason enough. Here's our take up spool, metal bush in the base, lonely film chip at the bottom there. Probably more of those, yes. Usually a nest of them down at the base here, stuck in the grease. You get enough of them, they'll actually make a problem. They are all from someone stripping out the film by, well, historically, by not setting your frame counter correctly when you loaded the film, and so reaching the end of the film and not realising it, and as a result, stripping out the film between the perforations. That screw's just dropped in. Now that's because there were little bushes loosely pressed into this piece. And those little bushes, let's just get rid of this screw at the top here. That's just the guidepost for where the meter sits. But at the moment it's just annoying me because it stops the camera from sitting flat on the table. Get the tripod socket off. Typically tripod socket screws are loose because of the usual abuse that tripod sockets get. Particularly on a camera like this, because with the tripod sockets at the end of the base plate, it means that it's difficult to get the camera to sit satisfactorily rigid on the tripod. Now this screw's loose, unusual, and this one is loose too, more unusual. And we've got one which had, this bush had popped out, I've just popped it back in place with my finger from inside. Alright, that's all sand and filth. Um, Here's the transfer shaft that takes the action from the cocking rack through to the shutter. That looks nasty, doesn't that look? That's, that's awful. Okay. That feel like taking it out in the garden and getting onto it with a pressure washer. But I'd better not. Okay, so this sleeve that I mentioned earlier, if the shutter release could be depressed because perhaps the shutter was actually cocked, and there was no shaft in at the top, this thing has a habit of falling out at will and dropping into the mechanism and causing grief. That's all filthy. Squeeze the buttons top and bottom. I can push this right through, keeping finger and thumb on the button so that they don't fly out. And more importantly, the springs don't fly out to the dimmest corner of the room, never to be seen again. This has been bent, someone's mutilated that. Oops, excuse me, but must be hungry. Get that spring, put that to one side. This has been bent, probably someone's lent in with a pair of pliers or something in an attempt to adjust the trigger point of the shutter, and it was the wrong way to do it. Any more groaning like that, I'll have to get rid of that. Okay. I've got everything out. Piles of loose pieces everywhere. And this body is a filthy mess. So I'll stack 
These bits can go into the ultrasonic cleaner and I'll start cleaning these pieces one by one with a view to getting everything clean and functional again. This is just shocking. That's just a mess. This would be the ugliest three big C camera I have seen in some time. Well I've just got to work away at getting rid of all this rubbish off here. This is uh, dried adhesives, the remains of the backing of the leatherette and corrosion. Their white stuff is corrosion products and you can see some of that lies underneath the remains of the leatherette and the adhesive. So I've got to work my way doing both sides, this at the front, cleaning off at the base here and then getting all the filth out of the inside. This is all sand and rubbish in here. So the camera's been to the beach. Um, it's a bit of a mess. Once I've got this clean, I can clean my work surfaces down and think about doing the reassembly. Typically I get the leatherettes glued back onto the front of the camera and the back prior to doing the reassembly. It's usually easiest to do that while the camera's empty. But I'll just get this mess cleaned up. And next time you see it, it'll be all nice and clean. If not necessarily pretty, but nice and clean. Well, I have a somewhat clean body casting. This should be good to go. I've got two major faults to deal with here. The chrome trim was bashed in at the base of the camera, but also the casting here is mushed over. I want to see if I can square that up, otherwise the chrome trim will never sit there properly. Anything else? Oh yeah, this edge here, it's visible, that's where the door opens back over. That's lost its paint. It was all just blistered up with corrosion underneath. So I'm going to have to uh, put a bit of paint on there. I had to take the back catch off completely which because uh, it was grit and sand in there but it'll also give me a chance to get to this corner. A good chrome trim will cover most of that but I don't think I can do anything with the existing chrome trim. So I'll square all that up, um, put some paint on there and by then the parts should have finished circulating in the cleaner. You can probably hear it buzzing away in the background and I can start reassembling things. First task here is to put the back catch back in place. So I'm going to use a little bit of uh, synthetic grease here. I'll just wipe both faces of the back catch. You can see the rust stains there, that's where the corrosion is bitten under this. It fits on there. retainer plate goes on here with its two tiny screws And the tricky bit here is reassembling the button, button and spring. Here's the button and spring. Apply a bit of synthetic grease to the inside of that button. Put the spring in place. Now to screw this back here I've got a pin vise. Pin vise is a very handy thing to have. Just tighten that up in the chuck. And it's all held firmly. Now if I hold 
the catch downwards with my finger pressing from the top. I can feed the pin vise in from the bottom. Do that up tight, back the pin vise up, flip the pin vise off. Here's my button all back in place. So that's that part dealt to. The front of the camera. Well, I've got to put my leatherettes back on the front here. I want to get the door back on that before I do that, I think. There's my door. Let's get that back on there. And the three screws from the hinge. Let's get that one started. The reason I need to have the door fitted back here is because the leatherette on this side fits over the top of that hinge. Okay, so the back opens and shuts nicely now. So that was a job well worth doing. Now, the leatherettes. It's still a bit damp. Must have sat that down on something wet. That's all right. The leatherettes. The line runs across the top. These ones, I've just spent a lot of time cleaning these. They're not exactly lying dead flat. I'm going to have to warm them up with a uh, hair dryer, I think, before I put them in place because I can see that they're not going to want to roll down easily. They're quite stiff. But basically, the secret with these is that these leatherettes don't extend the whole height. They fit between the chrome trims top and bottom. In order to get them correctly positioned it's often most useful, if you've got them off, to put a chrome trim in place top and bottom so that you've got a guide to where those leatherettes go. So I'm just going to pop a couple of screws in this for good measure. And I'll do the same at the base. Just temporarily so that it'll hold everything in place. It doesn't really matter which screws I use. These are all the same thread size. That one's actually a chrome plated one, that belongs in the top cover. Yeah, that looks like it's seated. And I found a replacement for the damaged one from the base of the camera. So I'm most interested in the front edge, of course, that's where the leatherette is. So I'll get these screws in around the front edge. get one at the ends both cases. Make sure that base plate's pulled down because it uh, may not be exactly flat. That's looking good. One more. Okay, I'm just checking the look of that, make sure those trims look even. And I'll see about gluing this back down. These are stiff. It's the top of the camera, so I want it this way up. Yeah, they're, they've got a bit of a cracked look to these. I think they're going to have to be warmed up in order to go on there. Of course, they were somewhat sad looking when we started. Okay. These are identical, so it doesn't matter which one we wear. If, 
if these have still got their original shape to them then put them back where they came from well I'm going to coat one of those with adhesive see if that uh, softens it out slightly and then press it into place Okay, let's see if this is going to help at all. Make sure the line's up, it's towards the top of the camera, that embossed line. Just smoothing this out. This looks like it's gone quite well. These front leatherettes, of course, were just hanging off when we started. We're very loose. Okay, I'll just try the other side. You can see I've put some paint back over that edge where the paint had gone. A little bit generous here. I'll just wipe off the excess. Oh, put that on upside down. You fool. I'm just busy warning you not to do that. Well, they've actually gone back better than I had expected. So that's, um, that's a good result. If you've got bumps, Zeiss bumps left on the leatherettes, it's because the leatherettes are hard and they've taken a set from the uh, rubbish that was underneath them previously. 
you can often get that out if you warm it slightly with a hair dryer and then run a smooth tool like the back of this pair of tweezers over it to ensure that things set down neatly. Okay, that's good. I'm pleased with that. That's a, uh, a good result. And I'll carry on. I better start putting this stuff back together. I've straightened this up, it was a little bit out of square. It didn't take, wasn't much out by much and it didn't take much to square it back up. It seems to move freely enough. I'll put its spring in place. That's good. I'll just lubricate that with a little bit of graphite powder. Graphite powder has the advantage in a place like this that it's never going to go sticky. And grease and oil, of course, usually ends up going sticky. Right, I'll go and blow the excess off that.